Welcome, welcome. Tommy will be in here soon uh, to give you all a huge update, but I'm going to just hang in while we're doing it. This other people going and chill out for a second. Thank y'all for stopping in. Hey, Oh, hello, Houston, Texas. Come on, Houston. I love to see it. Hello, hello, hello. Thank y'all. I like to see all the comments rolling in. Oh, we got Kim here. Hi, Kim. Thanks for coming. Good to see you today. Oh, hello, Mercedes from North Carolina. Mercedes is a co-working person. I, I know her well. Hi, Linda. Mommy will be here in just a few moments. We're just gonna, you know, hang out, let some other folks get the live stream, um, and then we'll get started with some in updates for our community. Okay, I'm seeing people from Houston, Texas. Where is everybody else from? You know, we got Texas, we got North Carolina, we got Detroit. Come on, Detroit. Shout out Detroit. Listen, we need to see y'all again. Detroit's a good place. I love that airport over there. I'm seeing people on IG are from Chicago, Georgia. Hi from Miami. Hey Miami. How's the weather down there? Dang, Terry is ready for this announcement. Come on, Terry. I like to see people going in early. Brooklyn in the building. Hello, Brooklyn. Thank y'all for coming. Okay, we got some more people from Florida. We got Atlanta, Georgia present. Okay, come on, Atlanta, Georgia. Um, hi, Ellie from California. How are y'all vibing with the music? I have to ask because I chose the music myself. Hello, Atlanta. I just wanna get behind you on the dance floor, then I take you back to the back of the dance club. Handsome, always call me handsome, then I hand rub, throw tantrums. If you leave me, that's it. Thank you, Tiff. I'm glad someone's vibing with the music. Because <laughs> I had to find a little music mix. Now, I didn't make it, you know, but I'm glad to see, you know, the vibe with the um, we'll just give like a, you know, one more minute or so here for some people to join in and we'll kind of get
Hi, Emily. Thanks for coming. Good to see you. From Long Beach, California. That's nice. Well, we also have people from Philly, Nigeria, and Louisiana. Welcome, welcome, welcome. All right, it's we've been rocking for five minutes, so let's go ahead and you know jump into it. Let's get started. Ooh, Karen's ready. Karen's excited. We got people from Atlanta. Yeah, we got all across the country here. I live for it. Um, while we kick off, I'm gonna showcase a quick video just to get into the mindset. You know, understand a little bit about what we do here at CGV. Um, I also want to welcome in our fantastic BGV team members that are joining. We got team members on Facebook. We got team members on Instagram. Listen, the BGV team is all up in this live stream chat. So I want to shout y'all all out. Um, thank you to my fellow team members for hopping in here. Um, and now let's look at a, you know, a little highlight video um, of a recent activation BGV had for Night of a Thousand Pitches. The video will speak for itself, but it's wonderful. Let's go ahead and get started. International Women's Day, and in celebration of that, we're hosting Night of a Thousand Pitches in partnership with TikTok. We're hosting five dinners across five cities, DC, LA, New York, Houston, Chicago, bringing together Black Girl Ventures alumni for them to meet each other, break bread together, celebrate International Women's Day, and they're introducing themselves to 60 Second Pitches for Night of a Thousand Pitches. to network and celebrate each other's accomplishments, figure out ways that we can work together, and just celebrate all that Black Girl Ventures has done for us. When you're sharing a meal with someone, it's a completely different connection. You're able to be more authentic. I love the aspect of being able to share an intimate dinner with everyone and hear about their stories, their backgrounds. The goal of Night of a Thousand Pitches is to amplify women business owners everywhere. It's important that we tell our stories because that's how we see ourselves, that's how we rally for each other, that's how we empower each other. You know, it's always good um, just to, you know, see more founders. That Night of a Thousand Pitches is all across the country, too. You know, it's not just one city. Um, so, listen, we might be coming to a city near you pretty soon. All right, so just stay tuned. Uh, BGV pitch applications are open now. I would be remiss if I didn't remind people because I know I see some folks in here from Austin. Okay, so the applications to pitch are open now. Um, there's a link down there. But without further ado, I'm going to exit off the stage. I know y'all not here for me, you know. So I'm going to exit off the stage and bring up um, our amazing founder and CEO, Omi Bell, uh, to deliver a special announcement for us thank you thank you so much joe yes well hello everyone uh thank you all so much for joining and and just thank you for being a part of bgv community it means a whole lot um i do have a special announcement i do also want to just share with you a little bit of the journey of black girl ventures you know, you see the videos, you see the stats, you see the amazing things we've done. We funded over 400 women-owned businesses. We have impacted over 18,000 people across 64 countries. We have 
Our founders represent about 10 million in revenue and 3,000 jobs for the U.S. economy. I mean, all of these things have been amazing. My team has been amazing in helping me get this work done. Um, but it all started from the news that women were not receiving assets to capital. Um, that black women, black and brown women were starting businesses at six times the national average, yet receiving less than 1% of venture capital. And if you check the numbers recently, that really hasn't moved much. Um, we still have where black and brown people in general are still receiving less than 1% of venture capital. Women in general are receiving less than 2% of venture capital. And I think there, there's those numbers and, and the core sort of stats as to why I started Black Girl Ventures. But what I want to share with you today, <clears throat> a couple things before I give you the great news. But one thing is that what is my vision for BGV? So I started this thing. We're in a house. My, the first Black Girl, Ventures, Black Girl Ventures event was in a house in Southeast D.C. 30, women, 30 people came together. We voted with marbles and coffee mugs. If you like that person's pitch, you put a marble in their coffee mug. And I gave the money that I raised at the door back out to that person in cash. And if you would have asked me then, do, did I think I'd be working with Nike or TikTok or amazing brands like Pimco? I would have been like, you're crazy. Do I think I would be, you know, on a Nike billboard, a Nike commercial or being a, a USB-C Power 50 honoree? Or I would have been like, Psh, yeah, right. <laughs> I'm just trying to figure it out. I'm just in the, I'm shooting in the gym trying to make this thing work. And I had to make some hard choices along this journey. Prior to Black Girl Ventures, I had a print shop, um, a product-based business, where for those of you who out there who run product-based businesses, you know how it works. You hit a wall where it's sort of money in, money out, and you're sort of trying to figure out how to break that barrier. Um, I had done that, and I thought that's what I was going to be doing for the you know, rest of my life as far as I could see then. And then starting Black Girl Ventures, it was alignment around what I believe in, the world that I wanted to see and the impact that I believe I could make shooting a big shot because honestly, this was me as one person bringing in volunteers at that time. We've been through many iterations of the team just as I grow as a leader and as we, as the community grows in their needs. And so I'm so thankful for every person out there when they share their stories with us, how, you know, we help them change the trajectory of their business, change the course of their lives being their first yes, first money in, like imagine all the competitions, all the money you've applied for and Black Girl Ventures being your first money in and your first believer and your first yes. And if not your first and your second or third, right? It, being along the journey of our founders has been such an important part to me. One of my, in my core, my values are creativity and community. Those are included. And so that's what I get to do as a part of being the CEO of Black Girl Ventures. We have more stats where it's like, okay, we want to serve 100,000 women by 2030. We're tracking to be able to hit that number, and we're excited about that. But if you ask me, like, what is my vision for Black Girl Ventures? How is the world different now that Black Girl Ventures exist into the future? It is that somebody's child, family member, sibling, whoever's watching them sort of grind it out realizes that entrepreneurship is a true option for you to build legacy and to support your life. They're like, is it going to be hard? Yes. But it was also hard passing math for you at one point or tying your shoes or putting a shirt on. Like we do hard things and we do hard things well as a community. And so we should never be back down from a challenge. But the fact that somebody's livelihood or community or family was impacted by what we do that somebody's child is like, well, my mom was an entrepreneur and she got helped by black girl Ventures and then she took off. And so, you know, so I think that that's something we could do. I think that I am now able to do that. Um, that is what I want to see, like the, the actual impact on community and people. So what is our special announcement for today? I feel like we've been successful at the impact that we've had so far. My team is amazing. If you if you haven't seen our Meet the Team post, then go to our Instagram, our LinkedIn, or our Facebook page and check out the Meet the Team post is giving you everybody's roles and their beautiful faces and just introducing them from behind the scenes to you in front of the camera. And I am here to announce that, well, one, wait, look, I, I like the tease, okay? <laughs> I can't just give it to y'all because y'all might roll out. Y'all got to hold on till I give it to you. Um, uh, so also just huge shout out to all of our partners, right? Pimco, Nike, PayPal, 
um, MBA Foundation. Um, these have been like pivotal partners at TikTok, pivotal partners in the work that we do at Black Girl Ventures, and we could not have done it without them. Um, shout out to all of our fellows out there. If you if you've been a Black Girl Ventures fellow, if you're a Black Girl Ventures alumni, a fellow, a bitch alumni, next gen, drop me some some emojis in the chat. If you are uh, at all have participated or benefited from Black Girl Ventures, even if you just follow us, drop us some um, drop me some emojis in the chat. Let me know where you at. I'm so excited to have been a part of your journey. Um, and after all of the success and the amazing things that we have done and that I have done as the leader of Black Girl Ventures, it is time for me to take a break. And so today's announcement is about I am it's me letting my community know that I am going on a sabbatical and my sabbatical will be for about three months long. And, you know, I, I it, at first I wasn't going to say anything. I was just going to set my auto reminder. My team is in place. Everybody knows exactly what to do. They're amazing. They're going to knock it out of the park while I'm gone and I'll be back. And, you know, um, that, that was all. And so someone, my teammates, they, they empowered and encouraged me to share this with the world um, because women don't get a break, right? Black women specifically, we don't typically get a break. And <laughs> it's important to see a woman in my position at the height of, of my career, um, you know, awarded, highly awarded, celebrated. I have um, just really done a lot. And so it's kind of scary. So I also wanted to openly and vulnerably show, like express that it's, it's not an easy decision to take a break, but it's important that you break before you break. It's important that you know to take a breather before you're suffocating. <laughs> and it is important to, on this road to accomplishing so many amazing things that I'm sure all of you are heads down working on, to think about self-care. And I don't want to say self-care in the sense of the way it's sort of become commercialized, but that rest is a part of your success, that you build up and you keep going. You build yourself up and you keep going. That rest is absolutely necessary. And I want to I want to I want to be a great leader, but I want to be a well leader um, because a well leader will be able to be even greater. And that's how I view it. Um, it's important in the the you're pouring your heart into the work that you do every day. You're pouring your heart into people and that the rest is not. I will be honest that I went through all kinds of emotions. Oh, my God. Am I going to be relevant? <laughs> like that that's the, that's the question like will i be relevant if i take a break for three months what will i do what if people forget about me what if what if i um what if when i come back black revenge doesn't need me anymore what like what what is that level of relevance and validation that we feel from working so hard every day we've told ourselves that like the people that got the team no sleep and the 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 overly grinding all the time and you know that that is the way that is the pathway to being relevant and being validated and being who you are. And that doesn't include really checking in with your spirit all the time. Now, I've also been the person that's kind of like, take a take a rest, whatever. But that's being lazy. You know, I've been that person. I've been that person that like, nah, I'm gonna keep on, mm, mm, I'm gonna work, nah, I'm good. Give me a nap, I'm good. And so April of 2021, and it's so interesting that we are now at April and I'm actually going on sabbatical in April. I didn't plan it that way uh, in terms of how this worked, but a top of April, 2021, I was like, you know what? Forget about it. Pack it up. Everybody. <laughs> I cannot, I have nothing left to give that if, if it's, I'm literally breaking April, 2021. And so that was the first time in, and then what, six years of BGV, that I had decided to take a 30 day break. So I took a 30 day break in April, uh, I'm sorry, in May of 2021. And that was great. I was like, okay, that's what I needed. Oof. Okay, jump right back in the grind, keep going. And so I said, I'm gonna do this every year. So 2023 in June, I took, I didn't exactly take 30 days off. I would say that was the goal to take 30 day days off. But within that time I was working abroad. So I was still working. Um, so I did take at least two weeks off, 
But what would happen is at the end of that 30 days, when my my nervous system was just getting to regulate itself, I was like back in the grind. And what we don't often realize is that you're grinding like you're five people. Even, you know, I have a whole team and I'm still grinding like I'm three people in one. The level of thoughts you put in as a founder, the level of your thinking is work, the level of deep dive, like your heart is in it. I wake up thinking about Black Girl Ventures. I go to sleep thinking about Black Girl Ventures. I'm thinking about Black Girl Ventures while I'm cooking. I'm thinking about Black Girl Ventures while I'm in the shower. I'm thinking I don't stop thinking about Black Girl Ventures at all. And that those thoughts, because I'm constantly creating those thoughts um, are also a part of my work. And that energy that I'm putting into those thoughts is a part of my work. And so a month just wasn't long enough. So what, what I'm hopeful for is one, I want all everybody out there following me, following the great work of Black Girl Ventures, being engaged with us to know, break before you break. It's so important that you take a break before you break. All right. That's one thing I want everybody to know. Another thing that I want everybody to know is that your relevance is not wrapped up in your current definition of success. Okay. Your relevance and your validation for yourself, you validate you. When people ask me what piece of advice would I give to entrepreneurs, I always say, one, be all that you are as soon as possible. Two, my greatest advice for entrepreneurs is you validating you. Okay. For your business, re revenue is the validator, not the people who think whatever they think. But if you're able to draw revenue from your business, that's the validator. But you make sure you are validating you. And so in sharing my journey, when you see my profiles, I won't be posting much on my, on my timelines. But if you follow me on Instagram, I will be sharing my journey through Insta stories. I also will be uh, recording some audio of, wh of what I'm visiting and seeing as I'm traveling on my Sirius XM shows, it, which air on Sundays at noon on uh, channel 126. So I would say if you want to follow the journey, follow on Instagram at Omi Bell. I'm going to be sharing in my Insta stories mainly. So you'll be catching them. Um, who am I when I take a break? Who am I when I'm not thinking of Black Girl Ventures every day? This is our eighth year at Black Girl Ventures. So we've been grinding hard, you know, and as a leader, it's kind of like, um, I don't like to refer to businesses as your baby. So if you ever talk to me, I, ever t I will tell you, hey, <laughs> your business is not your baby. And the reason why I tell you that is because hopefully one day you sell your business and you don't ever sell your kid. <laughs> and hopefully one day you let people actually get engaged in your business in different ways they can grow your business that you might not let them get engaged with your child. So pulling apart that emotional relationship with your business, because it's real, the emotional relationship with your company is real. Pulling that apart to understand how you validate yourself, how you take your own break, how rest is restoration, right? The core of rest being restoration, <laughs> the core of restoration being the word rest, right? And knowing that no matter what, all the things you've accomplished will make way for more things for you to accomplish. And so I just want to say thank you to my team. I am, Black Girl Ventures is in amazing hands with amazing people who will make sure that it's cared for. Um, I and, and make sure that the community, yes, that community gets all that they need and that my vision is carried out. I also will be back. <laughs> and I, when I'm back, <laughs> and let me tell you, all my friends that's watching this, y'all already know y'all about to get 5th 11 uh, voice notes. Uh, <laughs> my TED Talks, okay, of like 10 minute long voice notes of what I'm thinking. Because when I rest, when I come back, I'm on fire, okay? So, you know, if I'm on fire, really running on fumes, then I can't imagine what it's going to look like to be able to get three months of rest. So I am super excited. This is actually a celebration to announce to the, the world that I'm going on sabbatical for three months. And again, I just want to thank every partner, every believer, every fan, every follower, every person that liked, commented, any of those things. I just want to say thank you. Really, really a heartfelt thank you. Because I just dreamed this up and to have as many of you engaging as have been engaging, it is absolutely a dream come true. And I want everybody out there for you, your children, your family to know that dreams are worth dreaming. 
and your dreams can tr come true as well. And along that way, make sure you break before you break. So I'm going to bring Joe back up. Hey, community. I'm back. Um, wonderful to be back. But we all we want to turn it to you all, um, you know, just to hear what you have to say, get some questions like, you know, this is an open experience. Right. We want to connect with you all and really, you know, be there with you. You know, we're not saying goodbye to Omi, you know, at all. Um, we're just, you know, letting her hit her stride for a little bit, you know. Oh, I like this comment. Restore. Her. I like that. Hey, I like that too. That's how I heard it too. Joe, the way you just said it, that's how I heard it. But that's what that's that's how she typed it though. I know right. her too. That's how she typed it, you know. Um <laughs> <laughs> I know all about yes girls create, don't worry. Um, are there any questions? You know, how is everyone feeling? Oh, this is a celebration. Come on, Michelle. Um, wonderful. I love that. I see a comment from Kim, too. What's Kim got to say? I think it is great. My soul is tired. and I need a break, too. Yeah, that's oh. really good. Yeah. And I, I think that's why it was so important to share share this openly. Um, so thank you to our CMO and to the other members of our team who encouraged me to share. Um, I'm, try, I'm trying not to read the chat because I feel like I'm going to cry because I see everybody being like, oh, my God, I'm going to fit. I see people who have been following me or with me since day one when I was shooting in the gym, when I didn't have no money, <laughs> when I didn't know what was going on. So, mm -hmm. and and to see where we are, like, thank y'all so much for just being here. Um, any, if you have questions though, any questions drop for me, you know, what am I thinking? Where am I going? What, uh, you know, what those things look like? Please drop, drop those questions. Um, you know, it's funny, uh, our, our board member, one of our board members, she's like, what you gonna, um, you know, how you feeling? How you feeling about going on sabbatical? And I was like, I don't know. I think I'm gonna cry. And I think it's gonna be so much. She's like, you put a lot of pressure on yourself. <laughs> like, you should just celebrate. And I'm like, you know what? Sometimes we have a, especially if you grew up in the church, okay, I ain't gonna start preaching today because it's Oh, wait, it's Good Friday. We might need a word. But especially if you grew up in the church, there could be a sort of dynamic around like um, suffer to gain, right? And so when things would come to me easily, sometimes I'll be like, but did I really work hard for that? You know, do I deserve it? I would question myself about it. And, you know, having people around you with different perspectives to really pour into you to be like, wait a minute. You, this is not about suffering, right? This going on this trip is not about like just about how much you're going to miss BGV, which I will, which it will take me time to deprogram some of the things that I programmed into myself that has told me that this is how success happens through this level of work. Now I am testing out the idea that success happens through this level of rest, right? Like this level of work has increased my success. And now I'm actually saying, wait a minute. This level of rest actually is what creates the next level of success for me in BGV. And so I am, I am, while I feel a little bit nervous and I feel a little bit like, oh, what does it mean to take a break? I don't know. Um, okay, somebody asked me, did you find, did finding the right COO empower you to take a much needed break? That's such a great question. Um, did, did finding the right Chief of Chief Operating Officer empower me to take this break. You know what? So the answer is yes. However, one of the things that I had to uh, really understand is who I needed to recruit. Because so many times I'm like, oh, I got it though. I got it. Hey, we don't need we don't need a whole C suite. You know, we can do these parts. We just automate this. We got to But it got to a point where it's like, no, we need leaders in between me and the work of BGV because one is going to help our team not have to, when you're working directly with the founder, it's like you're in the principal's office all the time. Right. And I don't mean that from like a, a scrutiny standpoint, but just the feeling of like always having the pressure of like, this person knows all of the company. This person has worked in all of the company. This person is 
knows every piece of how this works. And can you fear against that person? That it, it's hard, you know? And I openly acknowledge that over the course of me developing as a leader, I didn't always make the right hiring decisions. I had to develop on my leadership decisions, how to talk to people, how to lead and not manage deeply. So I think that like, in terms of what has really opened up the window for me to be able to take this sabbatical is around putting the right leaders in place, developing myself as a leader, admitting to myself openly that I needed the break and that the break was necessary and that the rest was for restoration and not me being lazy. But it was like, hey, I need these people in place. Oh, what does a sabbatical look like for me? And does it need to be, how am I structured? Does it need to be structured? Um, I also had this conversation with one of my board members um, because she went on sabbatical at one point during her uh, professional career. And um, she talked to me a little bit about, about structuring it. And, and this can go in line with somebody else asked, where am I going? So I am going first, I'm just entering into a state of flow, which means I'm not thinking deeply about it. Um, I, all I heard, so those who know me know I'm super spiritual and I'm super woo woo. And, you know, I believe in being connected to the universe and intuition and intuitive business decision making, those kind of things. So um, the first message that I got was to go to Spain. So my first stop is going to be Spain. And I'm actually leaving tonight. Um, so as soon as I'm signed off from all things VGV, I will be hopping on a, a yes, I'm letting God lead me. I'll be hopping on a plane literally tonight and landing there tomorrow. Um, and I don't know where I'm going after that. And just, you know, I only have a hotel booked for a short amount of time. I didn't even book it for the entire time that I'm going to be there. I'm going to float around a different side of the of the country, of the world for a bit. And I'm just going to wait for the next message. So I would say, if you want to get in tune or hear those messages coming to me, then I would say you could you can definitely follow me on Instagram. I'll be sharing a lot of that. But yeah, I I, I don't have I don't have it fully baked. Are you taking and black girl founders with you? <laughs> um, not this time, Randy, but you know what? It has been in my spirit to do some black girl ventures retreats. Um, I think that wellness is a super huge part of, of uh, health and health care and what we need to be thinking about. And so retreats are on the radar for black girl ventures, I would say. So not packing any black girl ventures, any black um, founders into my suitcase at this time but <laughs> but yeah i would say yeah um somebody asked how do i stay grounded in my vision when the world is chaotic noisy and at times negative in other words how do you lean on your yes when well-meaning people are offering up their no's <sighs> you know that's such an interesting uh oh that's a good point ariana it's such a good question. How do you stay grounded in such a chaotic world? It's it's um, as I sort of clear the clutter of uh, so many thoughts, I feel things deeply. And I think that when you keep yourself busy, you also keep you kind of become numb to feeling. And as someone who's an empath, uh and i'm and finally admitting that that is the case right because i don't usually admit to that like no nah, i'm strong I, don't know. Uh, I, I repel feelings um you know thug tears that's it for me but I, <laughs> I as i lean into vulnerability and i lean into all of who i am and i realize that i feel deep i'm a deep feeler um it has become important for me to meditate to stay grounded through um, water is a is a really huge part. Omi means water, by the way, in um, Yoruba, but it also means mom or grandma in some other languages. Um, but it is it has been huge for me to sort of get be near water. Huge bodies of water is a big thing in terms of staying grounded. I also like to be uh, sort of research and be in the know. So like I went over to Jordan to um, in February. I was in Jordan to train um women entrepreneurs over there and women in tech and i i did a, a session on confidence and but while i was there i had i had the chance to visit places in jordan 
And what I what I came to realize is like, you know, right now the Middle East and, and all the news coming out about it is, is a volatile region. There is, I just really got to meet people. And it was like, and to notice how tourism, the lack of tourism is affecting um, the businesses there. And, you know, people have been afraid to go to the region and just, I really just got to get a deeper understanding of what's happening. So I'm saying all that to say, people is a way that I stay grounded, getting like, getting out of the noise of the news and being like, what's happening with the people though? And that's one of the things about Black Girl Ventures. On Wednesdays, we have co-working all day at Black Girl Ventures. And so going to those co-working sessions was a huge part of me getting grounded in the people. Being at the Black Girl Ventures events and meeting people at the Black Girl Ventures events and hearing their stories directly, I'm like, that helps me get grounded in the people. Else the noise of, of a chaotic world will overtake you. Um, but getting grounded in what the people are actually saying and going through, that, that has been it for me. That has really been a part of what keeps me grounded and keeps me being like, okay, I know that that this is my purpose and this is where I want to be. There's another question on that. Oh, okay. I thought somebody put up a question. How do you envision BGV shifting? Oh, go ahead. Oh, okay. Um, I just want to bring this back because it was asked a little while ago, um, and I think it's a really strong question from Instagram. If you don't have a job and your business is barely making it, um, would you still take a break? And I think I'd also add a little bit to this question if the asker doesn't mind, you know, like what would you recommend, I guess, on how to take a break for those businesses that might be in this critical position? It, I think this is such a great point. Because when I was uh, at the beginning of Black Revenge, I didn't have a job and, I'm, and my business, no business was thriving before, before I started my print shop. I was just figuring it out and I wasn't taking breaks at all. You know, so I would say to like, this is where I am now, where, you know, fast forward eight years of not taking a break. And this is where I'm literally like break before you break. I would say that when you are, um, when you're at the beginning of your business, the first thing to ask is not, it is literally about you. What fuels you, right? So that, that's the question, like what fuels you? So aside from survival, right, which I think it can have potentially fuel all of us, um, what fuels you, right? What I had to come to realize is that actually I'm better if I take a break. I may actually in that break and your break may look different. You may take a two day break versus a week break or a month break, you might say, I'm going to take my break going to look like this and doing this break. You may take a weekend break, but I think it's so important no matter what stage your business is in, because you can't think properly um, a lot of times without being able to take a minute to breathe, take a minute. So um, your break may not look like a, a month long, you know, your break might not look like two, cause you're like, I can't stay away that long at this moment. And, you know, I couldn't stay away that long if you would have asked me this at, you know, 2018. I couldn't, I wouldn't, be, I wouldn't have been able to stay away from working in some capacity for that long. I have built up to be able to stay away from working um, uh, directly day to day. I had to build up to here and it took me eight years. However, I will say, consider what fuels you. That may be dancing around in the morning. I have a nutrition coach who would say to me, okay, well, you're not getting in the gym, but can you just take one song and dance for three minutes every morning? Can you just do that? And I'm like, I can do that. So it's, it's measuring what you can do against what's available for you to do. That's how I would look at it. All right, let's keep um, these questions rolling. I'm seeing a question too. Um, any grants we should be aware of right now from BGV? Uh, yeah, I mean, we have, so we have our Austin pitch competition, which applications are open for that right now. We also will have um, BGV Next Gen, which is our HBCU program will be kicking off soon. Applications will be open up for that. We will have a total of four, I believe, pitch competitions this year. So stay tuned for those. Um, at the moment, actually, I don't know if I should announce this now, but uh, for our Miami community, stay tuned because we will have a professional development grant 
that we'll be uh, pushing out for the Miami community. We have some funds that we'll be able to do that with. Um, and and, and uh, what I want everybody to know is on top of our programming, I'm always thinking of creative ways that we can get other capital out to you. So like the, the TikTok grant that we just did that was purely for marketing, that was a creative way to help business owners get access to marketing at, um, support. We have closed that grant, but I'm actually, for all, any funders out there listening, we want to run that play again. So many small business owners need access to capital just for marketing, right? And so I think, and not only with that, we're bringing resources for those, um, for the access to capital, for that, for the access to the people um, who have the, who got the marketing grants. We're bringing resources to them as well. Um, so at this moment, I don't have any uh, grand um, grant announcements at the moment, but programming will be kicking off. So stay tuned for that. Also, make sure you're following us or subscribe to our email list because that's really where things will come out first. And um, if you've been a BGV alumni, even if you, here's the thing, even if you don't get to make it to the stage and like a pull up and pitch, it's worth it for you to apply an RSVP because as soon as those grant opportunities come in, that maybe we don't have as much money to do a grand announcement to everyone, we're going to send it to what we consider that internal pool first. People who have applied, people who have tried to get access to capital through Black Avengers, we're coming to you first when it comes to smaller grants that we have available. Or we're coming to you first when we do some of these announcements. Also, making sure you're on our email list because we're coming to you second. <laughs> like, so we're going to our internal pool first, we're going to you second, and then we go to the broader community. So that's the benefit of making sure that you're included on following us on our on, uh, being on that email list, being a part of BGV Connect to get that sort of insider knowledge first before we bring it to uh, the, the broader community. Um, so I would say at this moment, no, but you never know. I am working on if y'all have been loving the Way In series, the Where Are You Now series that we've been posting. I am working on a lot more content similar to that, and we're going to be looking for stories. So stay tuned for some of that as well. Um, for those of you who replied to the one of the stories that we sent out, stay tuned. I got more coming for you. I'm working out some things on the back end. But <laughs> just know that content creation is a huge, huge part of, of what we do, and storytelling is a huge part of what we do. So we're going to be bringing you more opportunities um, this year. So I'm excited about that. I do want to, you know, toss in a, just a few more things to that answer, um, because there's another question in the chat about, you know, if you're not inside of a, a particular city, you know, how can you sort of engage in Black Girl Ventures? Um, for all of you that don't know, Black Girl Ventures is going to a bunch of cities this year. We'll be in Chicago, L.A., New York, Austin, and there's another city. Is there? Chicago. Chicago, hold on, let me not forget about Chicago. You know, those Chicago girls are serious. They might come for me. Um, so, but we're going to five cities this year. But if you're not in one of those cities, you can also stay connected with us. Um, like Omi is saying, like through our community, you know, we offer a lot of things in our community, pitch practice um, sessions. We just had a pitch practice and collaboration with um, some folks from TikTok where they came in and gave some really critical feedback to a bunch of founders. We have co-working sessions every Wednesday. We bring in guest speakers and just any kind of general resources that we can Supply. Um, it's also a great place for you to go and connect with other founders and you know in different areas all across the country. Find that essential partnership you're looking for, right? We were so uh, lucky this recent Wednesday to have um, like a bunch of tech founders in our uh, co-working session, and so it just so happened that we got to have some discussions about tech and you know understand you know what's useful for everyone and how we can just overall support. So getting engaged in the community, I think, is extremely rewarding, and I would encourage you all to click the link in that bio, okay? All of y'all are on social media. So click that link in that bio, child, you know? Um, and you can sign up for BGB Connect through there. It's a, a wonderful platform. So I just wanna do a quick little plug. And listen, if y'all think I'm fun, if y'all think I'm funny, you know, I like to think I'm funny. I'm the community manager. So I'm, I'm very inside of BGB Connect and all those things. So, you know, you'll get to see me and I'll also help you through your entire BGB experience as well. Um, thank you so much for that, Joe. It's so, so true. And the making sure you're in BGV Connect is important because we're going to be bringing a lot of resources there. Uh, one of the things I wanted to mention that being part of a BGV Connect also gets you is we have, so we have an offering that we don't necessarily talk about publicly because it's only for our internal communities. That's why it's important to be a part of BGV Connect. That's called the customer discovery blitz. Now it's one thing for you to get access to a, to your individual customers is another thing for you to get access to a bigger customer. 
And so part of us helping our community build relationships with corporations is this offering that we have, have called the customer discovery blitz. Now during the customer discovery blitz, you come in and you, the corporations, the corporate employees become your sort of um, your research group. And so you come, you pitch your product and they'll give you feedback on would they buy this? Did they understand the advertising? Did it, you know, would they, does this look like something they would become a customer of? And you just get feedback, um, not necessarily just on your pitch, but on your product or service and how you're presenting it. And then that way you can take that back to your website. You can actually build a relationship and that they become a mentor for you ongoing. Because what I realize is getting into these corporate procurement systems really takes a re relationship building with corporations. And so that this is the access point for us to be able to get you in front of those corporations and actually have you develop relationships with them. So that is only available, though, to people who are part of BGV Connect and our alumni. Um, so make sure when you see those messages come out that you join it. Um, there was a chat and there was a chat. There was a question from YouTube where somebody said, I'm inspired by your decisions to take a sabbatical. I think uh, Sheila DSC. I'm inspired by your decisions to take a sabbatical. How do you envision BGV shifting or changing while you're away? I mean, honestly, I don't envision it shifting or changing while I'm away <laughs> um, at all. I mean, other than getting better, you know, I think that like I envision it running smoother, <laughs> maybe. I, I know our COO, uh, Vanessa McDowell Atlas, she is like, Listen, what if we do this? How do we tweet this? What if we put it here? Okay, got it. I'm going to I'm gonna do it like this. Hey, what do you think about that? So me and her are working sort of hand-in-hand -hand to make sure that things are smoother for the team. Um, because listen, you got to realize that when you're the founder and you're the CEO, you see every iteration of what your company has been with you. And you have to bring in other people and other expertise so that you can get access to diverse you know what the, the the DEI diverse perspectives at the table that counts for black owned companies too, right? Like you got to have diverse perspective at the table. You got to be willing to let other people into leading with you because that's how you build the strongest team and the strongest company. I I want to chime in on that too, child, because you know I believe in one quote. Okay, while the kids while the parents are away, the kids will be at play. You know, and I just hope <laughs> I really hope that like you know I feel like. Black Girl Ventures is instilled with a kind of spirit. You know, I think there's something, um, there's an energy, you know, is in the way that we work and the way that we think. And so I feel like we're very well equipped to continue to pursue our mission and, you know, bring as much support to everyone, all the community members, all the underrepresented founders out there, right? We're really uh, dedicated to that mission. So I hope while Omi is away, we can continue to grow, you know, and bring more and also just uh, really showcase the strength of the team as well. You know, we've got some wonderful team members that, um, you know, I love working with this team. I think all of them are great. You know, we don't have no beef on the team. Um, and I think we can really showcase our strength and, and really bring to you all, you know, exactly what you're looking for for Black Girl Ventures and continue to bring you more and more every single year. I can't. <laughs> yeah, you know, so yes. The short answer is yes, Paris. That is our goal. You know, it's interesting. Um, one of the reasons why we work in inside of uh, like inside the community specifically, right? Because there's a lot of, you know, there's places where the the organizations kind of like you come to them or you know things like that, or they they may not be deeply in the cities. I like working at the city level because we get to actually see what the ecosystems are doing and how best to work with people in that market because not every ecosystem is different st louis is different from philly philly's different from chicago chicago's different from new york new york is different from alabama like and so we've learned so much about how to work with so many different people um and so st louis is on our is on our roadmap we want to come to st louis we also want to be able to go back to cincinnati we're coming back to detroit by the way um we have a couple we have an entrepreneurship weekend I'm sorry, uh, BGV Next Gen Weekend, so like a HBCU weekend that we're doing in Detroit later this year. We're coming back to Philly. Philly, we are, uh, we're we're going to be doing pull up and pitch in Philly later this year. Also, I'm telling y'all that now, so you get your, get your plane tickets ready, okay? Because we're opening up to whoever is there and arrives. We're going to be giving out capital on the spot in Philly. I believe that's in October. So stay tuned for that. Um, somebody also asked about international. And so this is a great segue into international. What we found during the um, during what with the TikTok grant announcement 
and just in general is that people want us to come abroad. And so I have some good folks in Nigeria that I'm working with to try to get to Nigeria. We also have partners that are in um, in the UK that we're looking at. And so we're, we're, we are really just determining where to go first and where to go with what offering. So I would just say, honestly, going to cities and going to other countries is just a matter of the partner. If we can find a partner that is willing to get on board with us. So this is for all the partners out there and this is for everybody that wants us to come to your city. Tallahassee, I see what, you know what, y'all drop what city should we come to? Drop them in the chat, in your chat. What city should Baco Richards be in, okay? Let us know, drop them in the chat. We'd love to hear from y'all on where we should come next. I saw Tallahassee, I'm seeing St. Louis. You know, drop drop it in the chat for us where you want us to come and we'll we'll figure it out. But I'm letting y'all know to stay on, keep feeling on your radar for pull up and pitch for the fall because we're coming there. Um, and we want to be bigger than ever. We're also going to open up a marketplace. So we'll have you been able to vend at this one. It's going to be bigger than the ones we've done before. So I'm super hype about it. Um, but yeah, I will. Long story short, fam, you okay? We want to come to Aggie Pride. Okay, fam, you. But we love y'all anyway. I want <laughs> to. I want. We have people from fam, you um, who participated in our um, next gen program as well. Memphis, I'm seeing Memphis. Okay, okay, okay. I'm seeing Jackson, Mississippi, Bay Area. I see y'all. Las Giddy, where's Las Giddy? I don't know where Las Giddy is, but you know, I, I do want to point the attention to Hannah's question because I think this is a good question um, in terms of building your business. Hannah says, I do everything by myself for my brand. How can I find a talented team to be a part of my brand? I love that. Um, great question. So first, Hannah, let's think about what, what your brand is, what your brand needs. I would say one of my first, one of my first hires was EA or virtual assistant. Now for you, you might want to think about depending on what your brand is, you may be selling something. Maybe one of your first hires is a salesperson. So what will help grow your revenue? I know people typically give the advice around who to hire first by telling you that, well, what things you don't want to do? I actually don't, that's not a philosophy I used in terms of um, building my business. What do I not want to do? What I have typically advised entrepreneurs to do is think about, is that a hundred dollar task or is that a thousand dollar task? You are the most valuable, important and costly resource that your company has. So imagine that you're spending your thousand dollar resource, which is you, I'm just making a thousand dollar resource is you on sending an email or creating simple contracts or, you know, creating simple documents. It's almost like you're putting a, um, it's, it's, it, that is way too much energy to be spending on that such a small task where you can have somebody that's more aligned with what you're paying them and, and that, uh, in that task. So that if this is a hundred dollar task, you can outsource that it's a hundred dollars. Now, of course there's levels to it. And when you get to a point, where you have um, grown your business and get to a point where your business is bringing in some revenue, you don't need a whole, whole lot of revenue to hire someone to contract someone. The thing is, can whoever you're contracting help grow your revenue? So this is also a matter of thinking about like what kind of access to capital you need. Things that are, that are bearing on revenue growth, then you can take on things that require you to pay it back. Loans. You know, but if you take if you're not having revenue come in and what you're hiring for or what you're bringing in or what you would use a loan for is not revenue bearing, then you may end up into some debt trouble down the road. So it's like this is similar to like prioritizing when you bring somebody in is based off of are they revenue bearing? Right. So if you're if you bring in a virtual assistant for five hours a month or, you know, how could you grow your revenue from there? If you have them doing one piece of your job. Of, of what you're working on now and you can focus on another piece that if you're the great salesperson then you want to be focused on the sales not on sending emails right <laughs> not on your schedule you know if you are if you are not the great salesperson then you're going to want a person who can focus on sales now what that sales and automation needs to look like is different for every business so you're going to prioritize it according to what's revenue bearing and what is your true skill set that you know 100 percent all you gotta do is get me in the room i'm gonna seal the deal you know that as at one point in black ventures or where i got to in black ventures is knowing that just get me in the room i'm gonna seal the deal i'm gonna get the partner 
right? So it's not then taking up space for things that don't let me go into the room are not the best idea for me. <laughs> you know, and that goes back to taking a rest, right? Where it's like rest is absolutely the best possible thing I could do for Black Girl Ventures right now. Right? It's the best possible thing I could do for Black Girl Ventures right now is not what I've been doing for the last eight years per se, right? It's not taking another meeting. It's not taking on five more events to go to. It's not standing on 10 more stages. The best possible thing I could do for Black Girl Ventures right now is to take a break. And so I think you want to think about your business in that way. What's the best possible thing you could do for your business? Well, all right. Um, we're getting close to the end of the hour here. And you got to catch a flight. So <laughs> you need to get your bags packed. I know your bags ain't packed. Um, First of all, don't call my life out like that. You know? Not to, not to eat up. Not you to know, gag me. You know I, my bags are not packed. But uh, that's OK. So that's what we got to get you off here soon. But I just want to, you know, give you one opportunity again, you know, to say your, your final message, your final piece. You just dropped us some great words of wisdom. Um, so I want to turn the floor back over to you once more. Thank you so much, Joe. Um, and as Joe, our amazing community manager and the host of the pitch competitions. Um, so definitely, if you haven't met Joe in person, you are be, you will be delighted to uh, be able to have that opportunity hopefully soon. Um, <laughs> I just want to leave everybody with the message of break before you break and that the grind can no longer be a validator for your success, but the rest, the strategy, the thinking, the developing who you are will grow your business 10 times um, beyond what you can ever dream of. And I just ultimately just want to continue to express gratitude and just thanks for all of you being here. It has meant the world to the community, to us. You are the community and showing up for each other every day and all when we call on you and, and coming to events, I, I really, really uh, just want to say thank you. And that is that is from the bottom of my heart. I really, and keep on rocking with us, okay? Because we ain't done yet. <laughs> we we just, we gonna keep on going. So keep on rocking with us. Follow me at Omi Bell Instagram. I'm gonna be sharing through my stories. And I can't wait to see all of y'all in person at some point during this year, so. Uh, we're kicking off second Q2, okay, second quarter, going to a strong, get some rest, and take care of yourself and each other. Well, all right. With that, you know, we're going to say uh, see you later to our CEO and founder, Omi. Thank you so much for coming to join us. Uh, thank you to everyone in the chat as well. Um, I just want to take these lasting few moments to, you know, spread some good news about BGV, encourage people to join our programs, join inside of BGV Connect. You know, we've got a really robust year coming out for you. Um, so click that link in bio, you know, stay tuned with us. And, you know, honestly, the biggest tip I'm going to leave y'all with is if you follow that newsletter and you open it every month and you read it, I promise you, you'll never miss anything with BGB. That newsletter will have everything in there that you need. It'll have the applications uh, information ahead of time for you. It'll also um, keep you in tune with like some of our community efforts and programs. So make sure you like pay attention to our community section too, even if you're not uh, city-based with us. That's a wonderful way to stay connected. Uh, thank you to everyone that joined. Thank you to the BGB team members that hopped in. Um, it was wonderful to see you all today. Thank you again to Omi for giving us your last message. Um, I wish everyone well wishes and happy Friday. Listen, uh, it's break time. So we all about to take a break. I hope everyone's got a long weekend plan because uh, I know I'm about to have fun. <laughs> so I wish fun on the rest of you. Thank y'all so much. Bye stream.